All right, back with Dr. Thomas Cunningham here talking about pistol squats today. Why is the pistol squat gonna make me a better rock climber? Oh, wow, yeah. Um, so I would say surprisingly, of the foundational exercises we talked about, this is probably the most near and dear to my heart. And it's it's the great revealer, Okay. can say. So um, unlike some of the other exercises where you may be able to cheat your way through or maybe back off a little bit of weight, doing the pistol squat, even an assisted pistol squat, um, is going to reveal all of your mobility faults. It's going to mm -hmm. reveal strength discrepancies from the left to the right. Um, and that's going to look at mobility action from the toes to the foot to the ankle, the calf, the knee, the hamstrings, the glutes, the hips, the lower back, the pelvis. I mean, everything from belly button down will be revealed with this exercise. And we know from a recent interview with Tom Randall uh, how critical mobility can be on the wall. He was saying grades difference. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. the pistol squat is going to address a lot of that. What specifically is it either strengthening or opening up? Uh, how can we think about like what, what its impact mm -hmm. on our body is? Sure, so I think one of the biggest advantages of the pistol squat is gonna be strength and stability at the ankle, the knee, and the hip, mm -hmm. the big three joints. So you're going through mobility and range of motion in all of those joints. We need all of those with climbing. We don't think about it as much with climbing, but if you can't get your hip, your knee, or your foot on the right foothold, or to get your body in the right position, then even if you have the strength or the finger strength or the core strength, you're not gonna be able to perform the move. So, you know, you look at somebody like Adam Andra, right? I mean, his ankle mobility, his ability to stand on holds, his flexibility, his ability to get his foot at this, his shoulder yeah. level or do these crazy drop knees, um, you know, that is something that will be revealed in the pistol squat for sure. So let's contrast that with what might be uh, considered a, a more common squat, which is mm -hmm. just the, like a squat, right? Sure. Where you have yeah. the bar, bar on your on back, back and you're just squat. doing the squat like I did in sure. hockey practice in high school. Yeah, yeah, I, and I, I think that has utility to it. And I think that if, if you're someone that can't do the pistol squat at all, or for whatever reason you have knee issues or ankle issues and it's just not gonna be possible, doing a, a normal barbell squat has its advantages. It's still gonna get all the muscle recruitment that you need, it's still gonna have good hormone release from that exercise you just may not have to be as extreme in your mobility or in your you know unilateral mobility or unilateral strength that you would in the pistol squat well let's talk about form then for those who are mm -hmm. either new to pistol squat or it does feel uncomfortable maybe just because it's a little bit of an alien motion yeah. and i consider myself part of that so I, i've done a lot of squats as soon as i try to do a pistol squat i'm falling backwards yeah. on the butt i'm falling sideways mm -hmm. how can uh, I ease into learning the proper form and what is the proper form? Sure, so I think the first thing I would do would be to just practice with a two-legged body squat, mm -hmm. deep body squat. So that would just be with two feet on the ground, slightly toed out, and then as low as you can go, but all the way to the ground. Some people call it like No a, weight. No weight, yeah. And just to see how you feel in that position, right? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna provide a little bit more stability, but you're still gonna see some of those discrepancy. Uh, so if you try to get in that low primal squat where your butt's real close to the ground, your knees are maxed out um, on their flexion, you're gonna notice pretty quickly, can I get my center of mass over my midfoot or do I still feel like I'm gonna fall back? Am I having pain in the hips? Is it the knees? Do my knees feel like they're trending in? Right. Um, That's and, me, by the way. I'm, yeah, I'm falling back. Exactly. So like was, even that down in that well. squat, I'm falling yeah. back unless I can put maybe like something under my heels. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll put my heels on a, a weight plate or something yeah. like that so I can kind of keep up. So essentially we're starting there to try to just get comfortable or to train the body to be able to hold that balance. Yes, exactly. So I would say once we get in that position, then you're going to be able to see some of those discrepancies mm -hmm. right off the bat. And so it may be ankles, it may be knees, it may be hips, it may be all of the above. And so I think once you figure that out, then it's stepping back from that exercise and using some mobility drills to try to help with either the hip, knee, or ankle mobility, mm -hmm. and then moving back in towards the pistol squat. So this is an exercise that once you get it is a great benchmark. I know that if I can go in and I can do my pistol squat, okay, checkbox. My hips, knees, and ankles mobility is at least where I would like it to be. If nice. not, oof, maybe I need to step back and look at my mobility again or go back and do some barbell squats to keep the strength up, but then also work on some mobility. Um, I definitely was someone that this was a very difficult exercise. You know, I have genes in the past, my father, mother, sisters, brothers. It's, it, we don't have the best mobility. And so for me to get into that position was very difficult and it took me a while to try to get the knees and ankles to where it would not be painful. And now that I can do that exercise, I feel like it's the best protection for those joints. So comparing it to the other five foundational exercises, which we'll, we'll link below, uh, most of those you reference as being very good because 
uh, there's not a whole lot of room to screw up the form. Mm -hmm. The deadlift is a pretty simple sure. hinge movement, or uh, the weighted pull up is is a pretty you know simple movement. It's it's for beginners. You can pick it up. The pistol squat is um, kind of a bit of an outlier here where it, it is going to take some coordination yes. but you're saying it's well worth that investment of time uh, to get that coordination because of the benefits that it's going to bring uh, with regard to mobility on the wall i think so I, and it's nice that you can not only is it going to showcase some faults um, but you're also not going to require as much of a load on your joints to get the same stimulus to the muscle sure right so just like that one arm pull up versus maybe the two arm pull up there is going to be some risks and benefits to that but especially with the pistol squat you know you can do it anywhere you can do it anytime you can do it at your house you can do it at the gym you can do it at the crag and it's a good way to kind of get the lower body really going now before we add weight which I've seen you do, and you can add quite a bit of weight, but assuming I'm working my way up from that primal squat into getting a pistol squat where I'm sure it's real wobbly and mm -hmm. maybe I need to hold on to something or use something to assist, um, it's also still gonna be very hard for me to just propel my body up with that one leg. At some point in time, I'll get the hang of that and we'll start to add weight. And how do you add weight? And how are we looking at sets and reps? Sure, yeah, so I, I think sets and reps are the same. Right. Three to five, I, yeah, three to five. I think it's three to five, three to five. And I think that's, I think that's, that's pretty good. I mean, if you're doing three to five pistol squats, that's solid. Yeah. Um, but I think just taking it from the ground up, you know, the first thing we're working on is the ankle mobility, but then the same thing when we're doing that pistol squat, we want to make sure that the knee is tracking out over the toe. Um, we want to make sure that there's no ankle pain or knee pain as we're going down. So doing something assisted, either with your hand on a wall, your hand on a bar, using you know a rope or one of the exercise bands on a pull-up bar, something that's going to help you make sure that that form is there without pain before you're going all the way down. Nice. Um, the other thing that you can do is to start on a box or elevate the side that you're going to be working with. And as you elevate it, that is going to give you a lot more room to get the other side low. Sure. And even someone with really poor ankle mobility, knee or hip mobility, should be able to get down low with their foot elevated on the So then you're still working that hamstring, the quads, mm -hmm. you're still working that muscle group, but you've got the benefit of being able to drop the free leg below the level of the floor. Correct. Right? Yeah. So, so you don't lose your balance. Exactly. I mean, the big thing is trying to get the center of mass over the middle of the foot. And it's really hard to do that if you can't really extend the knee out over the toe with good ankle mobility. It's also very difficult to get low if you don't have good hip mobility and good abductor strength in your hip. That knee is going to want to float towards the middle. And as it does that, you're going over to the right. Right. So having that strength unilaterally to keep the knee out over the toe and the flexibility to keep the knee over the toe as it's going down is really going to help. Now when you're doing this uh, and, and you add quite a bit of weight, but again, as we're working our way up, uh, I know we've talked about with the deadlift, for example, there's a big benefit to the hormones, to mm -hmm. testosterone and this kind of thing, because you're lifting some heavy weights. When you're comparing it to a weighted, if I'm doing 200 pounds on a, on a traditional squat versus a no weight pistol squat, are there similar benefits to that? or? Um, do those benefits only come when I can start to add more weight? Sure, sure. I think that it's all about muscle recruitment. And most of the time, we are going to have to add a substantial amount of weight when doing a bilateral exercise. So if we think about you know, two-legged squats, right? we are adding maybe body weight or twice body weight or three times body weight. Well, you know, if I'm doing a body weight squat and then I take one leg out of the exercise, we're immediately doubling that weight right. on a single leg. And then we're also adding additional muscle recruitment because of the stability mm -hmm. so i would say is it going to be the same stimulus as someone that's putting 350 pounds on their back no it's not but i think that you get added benefits of the mobility and the extra recruitment of those abductor muscles that for a climber is probably going to be more advantageous great now similar to the others we're talking maybe a couple days a week um, in like a base phase where we're mm -hmm. training and then maybe one day a week just on season yeah and, and the nice thing about this is that this may provide a little extra motivation on those days off to work on some mobility or maybe do some assisted one leggings that are you know not very heavy but to just make sure we're getting that lower body in check all right i hope you enjoyed that nerdy video there if you like to geek out over this stuff like i do if you're serious about your training and your performance check out the patreon that i got going on right there for about the price of a beer each month, you get 20 plus hours of exclusive content all about leveling up your training and your climbing. I'm talking about ravioli biceps teaching moonboard, Drew Mack teaching endurance, Dr. Tyler Nelson on finger power, Jordan Cannon on big wall tactics, 
plus extended episodes and bonus content with Chris Sharma, Alex Honnold, Nina Williams, Dave McLeod, and so many more. It's all there for you as a patron to level up. And there's no obligation, so you can quit anytime. You can start right there. Check it out, and thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it.